at Silverstone, as in Barcelona and Paul Ricard. Pirelli brought a special thinner tread version of their tyres after testing suggested the new surfaces at these tracks might cause overheating problems. The head of F1 at Pirelli, Mario Isola, said that testing showed them the new tarmac at the Circuit de Catalunya has, in the tyres, a lot of grip, low wear and low degradation. This allowed for much faster lap times, but caused temperatures in the tyres to skyrocket. Pirelli's solution was to shave 0.4mm of rubber from the tread of the tyres that they brought to Spain, France and Britain. But how did this work? Well first let's look at how tyres heat up in the first place. Now to remind you, tread is the rubber part around the outside of the tyre, the part that contacts the surface of the track. It's a few centimetres thick and sits above the belt and the rest of the inner body of the tyre. The rubber interacts with the track in two main ways. Firstly, through braking and acceleration, driving the car's energy into the track to change the speed of the car. Secondly, in a lateral direction when cornering, absorbing incredible forces to allow the cars to change direction so quickly. Now as you know, tyre tread is made of rubber, a soft synthetic rubber that deforms very easily at optimum working temperatures. In the direction of travel, the rubber deforms in a spiral direction with the inside of the tyre pulling the rotation of the tyre such that the inside drives the outside and this stretches across the length of the tyre. When changing direction, the rubber is pulled and stretched across the body of the tyre at the point the rubber contacts the track surface and is then released as the tyre rotates that part of rubber away from the contact patch. It's this stretching and releasing of the rubber that causes the tread to heat up dramatically. See, rubber is made of long molecule chains called polymers which act sort of like springs and when in a relaxed state, these chains are all bundled and twisted up together. When we stretch the rubber by deforming it, as discussed through driving and cornering, a certain amount of energy goes into stretching these chains out. Now as rubber is elastic, when we stop putting this stretching force into the rubber, it springs back to its relaxed, tangled resting shape. But in both the act of stretching the molecule chain out and in releasing it again, which is what's happening as we load and unload the tyres, some of the energy is lost into the rubber as heat due to the internal friction of the molecule. This heat spreads throughout the tyre, through the rubber tread, and can cause accelerated degradation or blistering. I see the energy the tyres absorb in accelerating and turning the cars has to go somewhere. The three main places energy are transferred to are in deforming the rubber, in degrading the tyre, or into heat. What Pirelli found was that their tyre compounds, when put to work on the newly laid tarmac, were not wearing very quickly, despite the huge amounts of grip being provided to the tyre. Huge grip means huge energy being put through the tyre, and this means more heat being allowed to build up and build up as the tyre went on longer and longer stints without problem. Excessive heat buildup leads to thermal degradation or blistering. Thermal degradation is just the chemical nature of the rubber changing due to the high energies allowing the breaking down of the long molecule chains within the rubber tread. Blistering occurs when pockets of very high temperatures occur within the rubber and cause a local expansion of hot air or molten rubber, which rips the tread apart from the inside causing large chunks to break loose. Now experts in the field will tell you that holes in your tyre tread are less than ideal. So how does shaving the tyre tread down a little help this? Well, we can use a classic tool, a ruler, and the edge of a desk to illustrate how this works. If you hold a long length ruler over a desk and twang it, you'll see it gets a proper wobble on. Shorten that length, however, and its wobble is also cut down to size such as it is with tyre rubber. Trimming the thickness of the tread gives the tyres a little bit less flexibility. This means the rubber is being stretched and distorted less, which means a bit less heat build up in the tyre. And also, it means it gives the tyres a slightly shorter stint life, as in the slow wear rate will have less rubber to wear through, forcing an earlier pit stop and less time in building up the heat. This works so well that even Ferrari, who initially saw the thinner treaded tyres as a pro Mercedes move, admitted the shaved tyres were the right call after trying both in Barcelona. And in Austria this year we saw blistering rear its head again, even after last year's race was disrupted by blistering tyres, and drivers like Lewis Hamilton questioned why the Austrian Grand Prix didn't get these slim tyres as it was clear that blistering was a known risk. So it's clear that these thin tyres were a solution that worked well, without much debate. Pirelli have shown no sign that the shaved tyres will return in 2018, but looking at the bigger picture there does seem to be a sense of Pirelli behaving in a very reactive way, trying to be everything to everyone instead of driving a clear, well-constructed mission through their tyre philosophy. But that is a topic for another day.